Can we talk about Scoot? Yeah, because you know who went at Wembenyama? Not this week, but when they played in that U.S. showcase thing with, in Vegas, like the first game when they had the back-to-back games because Scoot actually didn't play in the Scoot second Henderson. one. Scoot, that was when I fell in love with Scoot, is that Wembenyama was the headline for that. And it wasn't the Chet matchup. It was later. And Scoot, you know, got him a couple times. Granted, Wembenyama blocked him a couple times, and that's when I fell in love with him, and I fell in love with him all over again in that first quarter. I fucking love him. So, yeah, you and I are probably, we're in the front row. So my plane was late and we missed the first half. Got in for the second half and he played, I don't know, 10 minutes before he got hurt. I only needed to see four. He's going to be a fucking star. Like you could, people can cut this out. They can put it with like Titanic music five years from now. I'm going to be right. This guy's a star. He fucking has it. I will fight you to the death if you disagree with me. <laughs> like, he has it. He just has it. I've been watching basketball my whole life. I know who has it and who doesn't. He fucking has it. He can do two things that you can see right away in four minutes. He can go by, he can go by anyone he wants. He's downhill all the time. All the time. The other guys, are the defenders are terrified of him. He can go right by you. He can go left by you. It doesn't matter. He's going by you. He's got speed. He's got athleticism. He's strong enough to bounce against big guys. I haven't seen anybody this young be able to do this since Rose and Westbrook. Those are the last two guys that had this kind of athleticism and ferocity that they play with. He fucking carries himself like an alpha. He can already run NBA sets and he's running pick and rolls and stuff. This guy is a star and the Blazers have to trade Dame. Get him the fuck out of there. Start the new era. This is, this is, they they hit the jackpot. Two team two teams passed on this guy. One couldn't pass on them because one Benyama was there. But the Charlotte thing's gonna live in infamy. And I, I don't think Brandon Miller is gonna be a bust, but this is gonna haunt them. I'm just I'm saying it now. I'm not even predicting it. This is gonna be a disaster for Charlotte. If you're a Charlotte fan, I was talking to Tate all weekend, his big Charlotte fan. He is fucking devastated. <laughs> like this Scoot's gonna be a guy. It just, he just is. And and we knew this, and they didn't take him. Well, I don't think Brandon Miller. Look, if Brandon Miller is still really good, and I don't care about his shooting numbers in these two games, um, he'll if be he ends fine. Up being, if he ends up being really good, it, it's he'll not really devastating. Good. It's just that I like what you said about Scoop because when I watch it and you try to talk about it, and you'd be like, "Okay, what can he do?" And be like, "All right, he does this a little bit," but he also, even though he's so aggressive with the ball, he'll get it out. Like he'll be like, "All right, no, no, like we have an advantage. We have a three on two. Like I don't need to just have the ball and cross half court with it. Like I'm thinking ahead. I." I'm I'm want to attack all the time in transition. And it's like, okay, but he doesn't shoot it well enough. People felt like this past year wasn't as good as the year before. The team was better, by the way, uh, the year before. Yeah. Um, but the it thing with him, the, you know, when I said, I was like, there's just some juice to him. When you watch it, you go, holy shit. And it, the last guy for me, because I didn't really see it in college with Anthony Edwards. I knew athletically how special he was, but that team wasn't very good. He took a million bad shots. You know, later on, they kind of replay the results where it's like he knew how bad the team was, almost like the Patrick Mahomes thing where you're like, why did you make some of those throws at Texas yeah. Tech? And it's like, well, because I knew we were going to give up 60. So right. I just I had to raise my level of risk. And I was like, oh, Jesus, I wish I had known that before you came out of the draft because it shows how smart you are. And with Anthony Edwards at Georgia, I was like, OK, like I get what, but I just wish he was a little bit better at the basketball stuff. And then once he got to the league. And you saw him, granted, it's not the same position that you're talking about with Rose and Westbrook, clearly, but there was just an element to him as Edwards developed where you're like, no, this guy kind of has all the stuff you want in a body and athleticism, but also an attitude. And there's an immediate impact on the game when Scoot is out there. Like his attitude plays. And a, about this, I, he's a fucking I can't wait. alpha. He's an right. alpha. He owned the court. You would. I, I don't know what his workout regimen is, but he he he's built like a 30 year old and he carries himself like a 30 year old. I don't understand it. Like my son was like, I don't understand how he's only four years older than I am. And I was like, <laughs> I don't understand it either. We we were just like in awe of him. Um, he's so comfortable and he's just his ability to whenever he wants go by whoever is guarding him is the single most precious skill you could have as an offensive player. If you can go by whoever you want, everything else is going to, is going to be easy. 
and it's like, oh, he can't shoot well enough yet. Cool. Check with him in three years because we know what his work ethic is. He's going to put it in. And, you know, Portland set, and this is that goes back to the damn thing with, with Simons and Sharp and Scoot. I have my guards, which is why the Miami package is so stupid. They don't need fucking Tyler Hero. They're, they, that would be idiotic. What do they, what do they need him for? So if they're going to trade him to me, I need to get Towns back. I don't even know if I'd necessarily want Towns, but I need to get Towns back. I need to get Jalen Brown. I need to get Brandon Ingram or Paul George if you're also throwing me picks. And that's really it because I hit the I hit the lottery with this dude. This guy fell to us at three. This is like the reverse. He's not going to be as good as Jordan, but it's just funny. Like Jordan, Less, not as good as Jordan. Have well, this, Kyle. Have this be the yeah. breakup video. <laughs> No, it's just funny that Jordan goes to three, Portland doesn't take him. And then all these years later, Jordan throws them back a solid. It's like, here, here's Scoot Henderson. This guy's going to be your franchise guy for 15 years. Uh, I think it's so stupid that he didn't go second. I just can't get over it. And again, I liked Miller, but uh, it was a classic Rosillo. I forgot you were out here a couple of times. He's, he, he's, he's good, but he's, I didn't feel like he was special. And I don't really know what the comp is. And I, I'm, I, I, it, please, it doesn't, I'm not shitting on him. I'm not saying that. I'm just like, if you're going to pass on Scoot, you better feel like this guy you're taking is going to be like a multiple all NBA guy. That's the only recourse. And if your other reason is we already have LaMelo Ball, then you should quit your job because Scoot is going to be better than LaMelo Ball. And that's it. It's a fucking fact. Sorry, I'm swearing so much. I'm just, I got off a plane. I'm a little, I'm a little haggard. Coming back for a 50-year-plus Simmons off a of Vegas bender. <laughs> Swearing up a storm. Uh, I know. Well, I'm sorry. I apologize for my language. I was fired up about the Scoot thing. I was like, I just, I felt so vindicated. It was like I you and me it. and five I, other people. And we were just like, w w how are you guys missing this? I just, I was like having those moments. You just watch the game and I'm like, just full of joy. Yeah. watching him do stuff where I'd go, do you not see that this kid already does this stuff? Like yeah. this is, you know, look, I did, the Chris Paul comp, he's more physically gifted, as good as an athlete as Chris Paul was at a, at a young age. Um, but there's some real like, okay, I'm actually going to do this to you. I'm going to set you up this way. And then I'm going to come around the screen right. and you're going to play it this way, but I'm actually going to wait. And then he's doing some stuff where he gets in the lane, which just shows that because he's smaller and has to figure out stuff like, again, Kyrie's still the greatest I've ever seen. I think the game has ever seen it. A small player finishing at the rim because he just changes the angle so many times. But Scoot's been doing some stuff where he delays, like he goes into it. Like, okay, so I'm timing you off of the first move into the second move. And then the second move doesn't come. And then yeah. everybody's now. Granted, he's making summer league guys look terrible with it, but it's just some of this little stuff that he's already figured out. That I'm going. This is special. Well, and he also he he's just a badass. The, the it was right on our basket, and it was right. I I don't know if this was the play where he got hurt, but he has a breakaway on the right side, and Jabari Smith's coming, and he kind of sees Jabari, and he's like, "All right, athlete versus athlete, let's fucking go, dude!" And he goes right to the basket on him. And Jabari is like, no, I'm not letting you have this because he was going to dunk on him and fouls him hard. He took the hit and went in the basket support and then kind of came back and talked some shit. But it was just, it was honestly what the Rose Westbrook were the two guys I was thinking of. And he's much more filled out than he's almost got Westbrook's body with the way Rose played in, in 09. But I also think he's more sophisticated than Rose was as a basketball player. So there's a little Chris Paul in there. I, I can't throw enough great guards out to compare this guy. To. I'm just like, I, I'm telling you, I only need to see four minutes. I'm like, I'm good. I bet. I've seen everything I need to see. Okay, would you say that no one is prime Derek Rose getting past guys, though? Because I don't know that I have... Well, that, but I don't that's, know that I can... That's what it I don't reminded know me of, though. Really? Wow. You saw it in yeah. person. I'm just saying, like, when I saw Rose in person... Yeah, he's people. so easily he so easily can go either way past somebody. Yeah, you're right. No, and that's it. like how many guys have been like that? How many guards? That's like the for me that's like the number one skill I want for I either want you have to be a lights out shooter like Durant was 
or you just have to be able to go by anybody. But with him, the key thing is that he's strong enough to bounce off these dudes and, you know, be durable. I don't know what happened with the shoulder injury if they're just being super careful. Yeah, um, that's probably it, especially after they had the Sharp injury last year with the labrum and, and everything they had to deal with. And, and by the way, Sharp, I thought was terrific in the first game. Wasn't as good in the second game, but like just the fact that that first game kind of had that second year vibe to it that Jabari's, yeah. you know, had here where I, I think that's more positive than I'd be frustrated about him missing shots in the second game. But going back to some of the G League stuff with Scoot, like I remember there was this one game where they kind of figured out, all right, well, we have to figure out, like we have to trap him on the first thing. You know, let's send him sideline and trap him. And he saw what was going to happen, that they were going to play it differently on this high screen and roll because they were kind of doing it as he was bringing the ball in transition. So it wasn't like a straight, hey, everybody stop, get to your spot, bring the screener up from the paint and then run it. It was something that was happening quicker before everybody kind of got settled. And so they thought they had him. Like he was just he was going to be trapped because there's two guys. And he could already tell what their adjustment was. And he just kept going. Like he didn't really use the screen. And right. then he went past two guys. And now it's on because he's in the paint and the defenders are going like, wait, how is he already in here? You guys were supposed to trap him over there. And he saw it. And that's the kind of stuff when you watch, you go, I, I can't I can't believe he's already figured the game out to this kind of level. Yeah, it is one of those things where if it turns out he's 27, I'm not going to be like shocked. If if they, there's a whole like, like the, he's. It's like watching the Little League kid. It's like the Cody Webster Little League World Series with these kids that just like, how, wait, how are you this age? LeBron was like this when LeBron was 18, 19. You're like, wait, what? How are you this age? I just, I left the weekend with him just thinking like there, there's real urgency if I'm Portland. <laughs> 